Alright, uh, hello, this is a bit of a Pokemon rant. I just made another video earlier today, but I forgot a couple of things and I wanted to talk about it. Uh, one thing that was also uh, uh, quite disappointing about X and Y, even though I immensely enjoy the competitive battling, trading, and collecting aspect of the games, because they're quite in-depth, there's a lot of mathematics that are going on behind the background, you gotta know all the typings, you know. I really enjoyed those games for those things, but um, uh, X and Y, at least during the storyline and everything, it was, as I said before in the last video, it's way too easy. <laughs> so not challenging. And, you know, one of the things that I can say for a fact, and I think uh, just what everybody is going to agree with me, is that the gym leaders had barely any Pokemon. Um, I think they were relegated to two or, or three of them. And that's about it. And then you get to the Elite Four. And what do you find? The Elite Four only have four Pokemon. Four. And I have six. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, the original games. You know, everyone says Pokemon is entirely designed for kids, right? Well, the original games were more difficult and more challenging than the new ones. Especially X and, X and Y. Um, I, I can say officially right now is by far during the main Pokemon series oh, the, oh. the easiest version of all. By far the most easiest, not challenging, and not difficult Pokemon game. It's way too easy. And that really pissed me off. The Elite Four only having four Pokemon. They were, they were, those guys were so easy to beat. And they only had four of them. They would have had six each time, you know, going your first time against them. It might have been, you know, more fun. You no, know, it's, it's not. It's way too easy. I mean, you go to the battle mansion afterwards, you know, those fights were far more challenging than the Elite Four. It was just, it was just, just complete ridiculousness. And, you know, now as I'm thinking more and more about the upcoming Alpha Sapphire Omega Ruby games, I'm really wondering, you know, and I'm kind of really worried that they're going to make this again. They're going to continue the dumbing down, the over-casualization, the over kidification of the games. And they're going to remove even more of the challenge to the point where, like, they're playing the battles for you. Where there's no, you know, it's just games are getting so easy now, so not challenging, you know, where the point where you're... Where, you're, where you don't unlock any secrets, nothing's hidden anymore, they reveal everything about the game before the game even comes out. You know, you can, in a lot of games now, you can just buy all the hidden characters, well, they're not even hidden, you can just buy the characters to unlock them, you can buy this, you don't play the game, you know, get good at the game and unlock something and have a reward for actually playing the game. There's no, there's no more rewards anymore for, for actually playing the game. There's rewards for when, when you buy stuff with actual money and give the greedy development company more money, but none for when you actually play the game yourself. And it's quite sad. Gamers today think the gaming industry is so great that gamers that brought in with like the N64 or you know even later on after that, you know, they think that, oh wow, you guys are complaining too much. No, we're not. Uh, we remember much better times when things actually were better and you actually had to play the game and you got rewarded when you played the game, you got good at it, explored the world, and you found a cool hidden secret or an easter egg. Sure, you know, the internet might exist and it might reveal that stuff to you, but you don't have to watch it. But I digress. Anyways, Elite Four and X and Y only having four, the gym leaders having even less. And it's sad, and I'm very worried that the new games upcoming will continue this trend. You know, how many Pokemon will the Elite Four have this time? Three of them? And maybe the gym leaders only have two or one? You know, it's, 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 it's scary. It's scary how unchallenging. Because, like, you know, I get pumped for the game. You know, I know I'm going to enjoy competitive battle with my friends, you know, some new additions. But I'm also at the same time not excited and kind of worried to even play the game. Because I know that I feel in my heart that I'm going to be disappointed. And this trend isn't just happening with Pokemon, it's happening with just about every single genre, franchise, of all gaming that exists today. It's being dumbed down, over-casualized, and over kidified You know, removing all challenges, removing all barriers, making a game that 
appeals to a global audience. Well, you know, I'm a part of the globe, and those types of games where you remove all challenge, all difficulty, and hold your hand and have tutorials for the most basic, most basic, easy things that you should know, that does not appeal. I mean, look at Resident Evil 6. Look what happened with that. They wanted to make a game that appealed to everyone, and it just ends up pushing away everyone. Stick to, you know, what your game is good at and really, you know, try to make a good, fun game that people enjoy. Don't try to make it appeal to a global... When someone says, we're trying to make a game that appeals to a global audience, it means they're dumbing the game down, they're over-casualizing over it and making it super easy and holding your hand for the entire way. It's pissed off. So, I want to know, do any of you guys have any information at all about the upcoming Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire games? Do you think... They're going to continue the trend and put, you know, the gym leaders and elite fours, which are supposed to be the most challenging, you know, types of AI you'll fight in the game, and continue to dumb those down, continue making it easy. Do you think that this game will be even easier than X and Y? Or do you think they might, you know, input, like, a challenge mode? At the beginning, you shouldn't have to beat, like, uh, I think Black and White was it one or two, had a challenge mode where you, I think you had to beat the game first, I believe, until you could unlock the challenge mode. But I hope, you know, they, they could go over it both ways. Hey, here's one way I solved this issue. If you want to make the game super easy and kiddie for all the kids, right? You want to do it for all the kids? When, you know, the funny thing is, is that the, most people who play Pokemon, the games now, are over 20 years old. You know, I'm 27. I'm a part of that original generation. So, you know, I'm the. Uh, I'm your market, not the kids. But anyways, you want to make it easy for the kids and satisfy the global audience, you know, make an easy mode for them. You know, make an easy mode. So then they can't complain that they were left out. You should make the game, the normal game, you know, like have some challenge into it, you know, and then make a challenge mode where, you know, it implements Nuzlocke rules. There's something that'd be awesome. Here's something that I would love to see in Pokemon. You know how, uh, you know, some people say, um, the Pokemon creators made this up, the Nuzlocke challenge. Why don't you find a way to implement that and make it and put it into the game? Implement Nuzlocke directly into the actual game's mechanics. So you can have an option. Turn on Nuzlocke rules for if your Pokemon dies or uh, faints, it actually disappears. Gets deleted. You know, something cool like that. That would make it, you know, more intense. You know, why don't they do that? I'm surprised they haven't done that by now. Why should I have to go look up online Nuzlocke rules and, you know, uh, you know, you have to trust that people are going to abide by that. Why, why do you do that? Why not implement that? Do you know how fun that would be? you know how much more, you know, people would want to pick up the game and try it out? You know, they could implement multiple difficulty levels and, you know, say you put it on hard mode, you know, uh, the basic trainers in the games, their Pokemon are higher level. Uh, maybe they have, you know, more advanced attacks than they typically would have at that level, you know, maybe they have some TMs on anything. You need to make the game more challenging. I'm not saying ignore the kitties. Give them an easy mode where everything's easy and dumbed down where they can just go through with their starter Pokemon, not catch any Pokemon, just go right through the game, never catching another Pokemon and beat the entire game easily, their hand held throughout the entire way. Uh, it, there's a tutorial where it tells them, press up on the D-pad to go up, press left on the D-pad to go left. Press down on the D-pad to go down. Press right on the D-pad to go right. If you really want to get easy, super kitty, over glorified bullshit, you can do that. But also, you should do something for your main audience of the game, which is actually people over 20. No joke. The, the average age of gamers in general is 31. We have the money. We have the jobs. We're the ones going out and buying your shit. We're the ones that actually wait for seven hours for a midnight launch of a game, and we'll probably end up buying a console. If, you know, let's say it's a console launch, we'll buy a console and a couple games with it. We are your market. It's not the kids. The kiddies are not your market. You rely on the parents to buy that stuff. Sure, the parents will buy their kids some games, whatever. But your main market is people over 20. It's not this, you know, everyone thinks that, oh, games are only for kids, only kids play games. Sure, a lot of kids do play games now. This is an electronic age. There's a lot more electronic entertainment. But you need to take care of the people, your main audience. The hardcore gamer has been very much left behind in today's gaming uh, market. It's just, you know, the, the, over, the success of the Wii 
yeah, sure, it made some success, you know, but it was a lucky action. It was the world's most best-selling dust collector. It had some good games, but that doesn't mean it was a good system. And the uh, success of that really, you know, made games turn down even worse, made them even more casual, more kitty, more, you know, easy. But anyways, uh, that's uh, all I got to say about uh, that. Just uh, let me know what you think. Comment down below if you have any thoughts on what I said, your own thoughts or feelings on the issues that I talked about. Please let me know. And uh, that's all I got for today. Peace.